Advanced Authentication Framework 5.5 ships with a SAML2 identity provider, uh, which means that it can integrate using the SAML2 protocol with an ESP. We're going to show how to integrate the Advanced Authentication fi Framework 5.5 version with NAM 4.3 and show you how users can authenticate to the Advanced Authentication Framework server, which will then generate a SAML assertion, which the NAM SP will consume and single sign on users to NAM protected resources. Here we have uh, the Advanced Authentication Framework UI. I've logged in as the administrator. And under the server options, there's a new tab in here, new feature, which again, didn't exist with previous versions, where you go in, by default, it's disabled, but you would go in here and enable it. And you'll get a warning saying that when you enable this, the minimum requirements go up to four gigs of memory. Uh, so a slight increase in the number of resources required on that. So you simply go ahead and do that. The next step would be to actually go in um, and take a look at the events. We're going to create a new event in here. Uh, it's a SAML2, SAML2 O event, which I've created here. So you just give it a logical name, make sure it's enabled. And there's a drop down list of events in here. Uh, generic is the default, but we're going to specify SAML2. Next is you're going to define what chain we're going to use to authenticate the users in this SAML2 framework. So just for simplicity, I've kept it down to LDAP password. That simply means that when uh, a SAML authentication request is generated into this uh, AAF box, what we're going to do is we're going to authenticate users using their LDAP password. And then the next step here is to actually insert the SAML 2.0 settings. Now, this, these are the settings for the SAML 2.0 SP. In our case, that's going to be the NAM box. So what you go is you go to the NAM metadata here, NIDP SAML 2 metadata on your NAM box on your NAM IDP server. Hit Control U to save it out to, uh, uh, to, to be able to view the source. And we're going to copy, uh, and this is needed because NAM can act as both a SAML 2 identity server as well as a service provider. We're only interested in the service provider component for this particular test. So we're going to cut and paste this section here, just the entity descriptor section at the top. I go back to my text file here, and then I'm going to go and search for SP SSO descriptor, which is part of this is the SP metadata on my NAM box. So I'm going to cut and paste from here down to the very end, add that to this particular file here. So now that's my NAM SP metadata. So I can literally cut and paste that. I'll go back into the administration here. This is where I would cut and paste the data into this particular piece here. And once you've done, you can actually save that out. And now what you have is you have your SAML 2.0 event defined. The next step then is to go to policies. And under policy, we have, again, with 5.5, there's a new tab in here, which is SAML 2.0 policy. And this is where we're going to have to go to export the AF metadata. So the first thing you're going to have to do in here is put in an external URL. That's the URL name associated with this AF device. And this URL is going to be used to define the metadata. So you put in your external name associated with the Advanced Authentication Framework server, and then you click Download IDP Metadata. And this is the metadata. And if we go down here to the very bottom, we'll hopefully see there's our reference to the external URL in here. So you'll save that out and we'll need that later on for the for the NAM piece. So that's all really that's needed on the advanced authentication framework side. If we switch over to look at the NAM configuration now, we go in here and there's a couple of things that we need to do first of all before we set up the actual SAML relationship. We're going to go into the shared settings and just go back a step here. And we go to shared settings. And in here, we're going to define an attribute set and a user matching uh, criteria. So the attribute set defines the type of attribute or the attribute names that are needed for single sign on to NAM. So in here, I've literally created an AAF55 attribute set. And you're going to have to define a remote and a local name. The local name is going to be the LDAP credential profile. This is under mapping. It's a little bit slow. 
and in here you would create this entry here. So local attribute l.mail, remote attribute simply mail, and then the remote format is basic. And what this is going to do is the AAF generated assertion is going to have an attribute called mail, and we're going to map that to the LDAP attribute mail attribute, which is internal to NAM, and then we're going to use that for the next stage, which is the uh, user matching definition. So I'll just go back here, and under using user matching expressions over here, we're going to reference that LDAP attribute that I just created in the attribute set there. So in here, it's just literally looking for the LDAP attribute mail, which we will have received within the assertion. So these are the two requirements to be done under shared settings. Once we have that done, we'll go into the devices, the IDP server, the IDP cluster, and we'll have a look at the SAML configuration. In the SAML configuration, you create a new identity provider. So you would click new identity provider and you'll give it a logical name and very important you'll give it the metadata. You'll have to enter the metadata. The metadata is what we captured from the previous session here. So you literally cut and paste that and you go back in here and you would add it to the metadata. And I've already gone ahead and done this so it's already been imported. Next is you go in and define the authentication card. And the authentication card indicates how NAM is going to generate NAM, which is the SAML SP is going to generate an authentication request into the AF identity server. So in here, I have some of the attributes of that request. Uh, you can be, it can be transient or unspecified, don't make it persistent. Uh, you can leave requested by as blank, but what's important here is under the SAML options, change the default from let IDP decide to post. If you let IDP decide it defaults to artifact, which may work in your environment, but there's also a chance that it won't work. Post is probably more standard. So that's the first thing you do in there, defining the authentication request. The next thing is we go into the attribute map, and under the attribute map, we'll go in, drop down to our AF55 attribute set, which we just created under shared settings, and make sure that the LDAP attribute mail is brought over to obtain at authentication. And then finally, we go into user identification, and under user identification, we will actually go in here, and this is how we're going to take the incoming assertion generated by the AAF box, and we're going to map it or match it to a local user in the NAM environment. So you don't have to do this, but if you need any of the LDAP attributes associated with the local user, this is where you can retrieve the information from. So you would enable attribute matching, and under the attribute matching settings, you go in here, you click on this particular icon, and you get a list of drop down options. The first thing is, where are we going? To, well, the first thing is user matching expression. What attribute are we going to match on? And this is the LDAP matching expression that we made later on. So we're going to take the mail attribute that comes in the incoming assertion. We'll tie that to the LDAP mail attribute. And then we're going to search in this user store to see if we have a corresponding user with that particular email address. Once we have that done, we can apply and update the changes and we're ready to start testing. So to test, you can go in here and you can access, for example, uh, we'll access the NAM or three, I'm gonna access one of my protected resources here, servlets examples, and it has an any contract enabled on it. So I get redirected to the NAM IDP server, and now I'm going to have a reference to my AF55 IDP. I click on that, I get redirected over here to the AF box. Now I'm going to put in the initial requests for my user. I click on next. It's going to identify a local user in the, in the user store, referenced by AF. I'll put in my password there. And hopefully it'll validate those credentials and then generate an assertion, which it sends back to NAM and I'm single sign on to NAM.